morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us for episode 31 of Cage Side Convos. I am Rick Huntsman. And this is Quince. What's up? We're coming to you guys live, as always, from American Top Team right here in Watertown. And uh, today we're going to be talking about <laughs> uh, cultivating your passion. Um, this past Saturday, I had the opportunity to speak at an event. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so it's um, a... Uh, Basically, a, a community event that's put on by um, local. What would you call JP? Uh, oh man, he, event organizer. He does a little bit of everything. Yeah, he he's, does. He's man. a uh, sure. He, he's an organizer. He sets up. He builds the stage. Him and his people build the stage. Yeah. Um, what do you call? It? He's a, a show promoter as well. Yeah, there you um, go. You know, yeah. uh, Black Shoe Productions. Black Shoe yeah. Productions. So yeah, they they put together an event um, to. Uh, stop the hate, anti-violence, um, just kind of community awareness. And the idea is to, uh, the best I can discern is to bring together like-minded people um, to uh, showcase their talents and you know, a bunch of different musicians play together. Um, and, you know, just kind of get a good, basically, community vibe. You know, sure. we all, uh, sure. everybody with the, you know, the same idea of peace will get together, um, you know, and, and just a good sense of community. Yeah. I feel right yeah. and uh, <laughs> so I got to speak and um, I, I talked a little bit about uh, uh, passion and how uh, cultivating our passion and growing our passion we can find people who are either passionate about the same things as us or have gone through similar things to find their passion or even just having a conversation with somebody they can be passionate about music you can be passionate about you know sports and you find that same kind of feeling in that sure. and, and can uh, commiserate over the uh, just that, that general feeling of passion and being sure. excited about drive that. and accomplishment yes and, yeah, there are yeah a lot yeah. of things that come with it yeah absolutely absolutely um so after that uh i kind of got thinking a little bit more about you know, what it meant to cultivate passion and build a passion and grow your passion right um and the first thing i thought about was how do we know what we're passionate about and I, I actually couldn't come up with an answer to that because you can say, well, I like music, mm -hmm. okay, but are you passionate about music? Or I like, uh, you know, I like singing, I like reading, I like writing, you know, I like training, mm -hmm. you know, but are you, are you passionate about that? What does it mean to be, what does it mean to be passionate? Right. Um, so I started doing some research and uh, I was actually, I was listening to this podcast. Uh, the author's name is Cal Newport. And he wrote a book uh, called Be So Good They Can't Ignore You, which uh, turns out is actually a, a Steve Martin quote, which I'm a big Steve Martin fan, so that was pretty cool. It's, Be so good they can't ignore you. Gotcha. It's about uh, cultivating and growing your passion and stuff. And essentially, what he was talking about is the research indicates that your best option, instead of just deciding what you're passionate about and chasing that, yeah. is wherever you find yourself is, is cultivating and growing your passion, is embracing that, right? So, uh, which led me to the thought of uh, work brings passion. Mm -hmm. You know, you always say uh, work brings motivation. I think that the same can be said for work uh, bringing passion, or, uh, <coughs> you know, builds that passion because if you focus on what's in front of you, right. it, whether, it's your, whether it's your job, whether you're, you're reading or writing or singing or, you know, rapping or just, philosophizing or you know whatever you find yourself doing if you mm -hmm. embrace that and focus on becoming the best at that that you can yep. a lot of times what you'll find is that through that constant growth and that constant work is you become passionate about that endeavor mm -hmm. you know so a lot of people right out of high school they're not they don't know what they're passionate about they don't know what they want to do people find themselves in jobs and the first day they get there they think shit I'm not passionate about this I hate this I don't want to be here right. and you find yourself being miserable with it mm -hmm. instead of just saying, okay, well, this is where I am, this is what I have in front of me. I'm gonna work as hard as I can to develop the skill sets necessary to be the best I can at whatever I'm doing right sure. now. You know? And through that journey, through building the skills and learning what's necessary to be the best at, you know, again, if we just say your your career, right? You may find that some sub area of study is what you're really passionate about. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can chase that a little bit more right you know? right and you know um, oftentimes when people speak of their passions um, they don't necessarily come by this 
d divine intervention. Yeah. You know, I think yeah. sometimes uh, a lot of people they they assume it's something that's magical that happens, and right. and, and don't. <clears throat> Don't get me wrong, there are certainly instances in which it feels that way, but yeah. uh, sometimes when you're trying to figure out what it is you're passionate about, uh, it's trial and error. You know, yeah. it's, it's yeah. exposing yourself to different uh, situations and hobbies and um, uh, 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 skills and seeing which one actually that, that you um, naturally move towards. Right. Um, and I think that's just at the basic level, but I like, I really like what you said about the fact that it's, you know, what what is... What is it that you do in your free time, in your spare yeah. time, when you're not obligated to do a single thing? Yeah. What do you find yourself reading, um, talking about, uh, making, creating? You know, uh, ask yourself these questions and try and be more aware um, and present. Because, uh, you know, to take something that you are have a natural inclination to, um, and and to focus on it and find and work toward it and find and build this self mastery right. um, the, 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 the potential is, is uh, limitless yeah you know as absolutely. far as what can come, uh, what can come from that absolutely and I think that so the notion of what are you doing in your free time what are you doing in your spare time that really is when we you know kind of grow as mm -hmm. a person right? just like you, you know an athlete develops in yeah. the off season you know uh, when we're in our free time, that's where we're really going to develop and build as a person because that's what that's when it's optional. That's right. where what we learn is optional, and that tells us again. If you find yourself when you're when you're off the clock, if you find yourself thinking, okay, well, if I read a little bit about this, or if I think about this, or if I study this, then tomorrow when I get to work, I'll be a little bit better at my job. Mm -hmm. And if you if you continue in that pattern, you know, five years later, you could figure out that you love what you're doing right? Um, because you can constantly learn and you can constantly grow in it. Right. You know, I don't think you can be passionate about something that has a limited growth potential. <clears throat> yeah, you know, and I think uh, that's kind of the difference in, there's a, there's a difference in motivation uh, sure. for such passions. There's, a, uh, there's intrinsic motivation and there's extrinsic motivation. Uh, and of course, being uh, intrinsic being um, almost self-motivated. Uh, you know, to do something, to do something because you enjoy it, uh, not because you're asked, um, and to find you know value in that internally. Uh, extrinsic is more so doing it because you know your your parents say this is what you should be doing, um, maybe because this is what your friends are doing, so you want to keep up with the Jones, um, or <laughs> even if it's just financially, if you're if you're if you're doing something um, for money. Um, Maybe, maybe making money can be a passion. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But uh, certainly people do a lot of things that they're not as passionate about, but because it brings them in money. Right. Um, and I think there's a lot of complications with stuff like that because I, eventually <laughs> I think you're going to hit a wall. Um, you know, certainly if, if, if what it is you're doing to make this money is not fulfilling, um, uh, you're, I think eventually you're going to burn out. Right. You're going to burn out. Um, you know, because they, you, you still have that void uh, yeah. within you. So, you know, it's breaking down uh, those, those two types of motivations, I, I think, first, mm -hmm. and finding something that's very unique to you as an individual, uh, yeah. you know, opposed to, and I don't want to say being a follower, um, because I do think it's important once you do find stuff that is, uh, um, you know, second nature to yourself. You know, to look for and to seek after role models yeah. or instructors of people that have yeah, been there. Absolutely. Well, I mean, we talk about it all the time. Is there's there's nothing new, right? You know, it's not like you're going to stumble upon this this brand new activity that nobody's ever been there before. And it's right. it, like you said, it's very important to have instructors or mentors <coughs> or role models that you can follow after, uh, or even find other people that are trying to do the same thing that you are. Right. To it can be mutual beneficial. Sure. You know what I mean? The success isn't this finite. Thing. Everybody can be successful, you know. Uh, so finding like-minded people and people that can help you grow is critical. Absolutely. Um, and when you, you know, if you understand your job as something that's just paying the bills while you're cultivating your passion, that that could be fine too. Because right. as long as you're working in your free time to cultivate your passion and to grow and to practice again. So if you if you want to be an artist. Right? If, if, you, if you want to be a musician and if you're in your off time 
if you're compelled and you're driven, so intrinsically motivated mm -hmm. to to learn, uh, say guitar, right? Practice guitar, and that's all you want to do in your off time. Even when you're at work, you can think about guitar, you can think about music theory, and it's just this lush and, and very in depth feel, you mm -hmm. know. So it's not like just because you're at work, you can't practice and cultivate your passion, mm -hmm. you know. And <clears throat> when you're outside of work, that's all you focus on, great. But the thing is, is that I think when people think about what it is to be passionate is people think that they have to pick one thing. Right. They just have to pick right. one thing and say, this is what I'm passionate and this is what I'm gonna go for. Mm -hmm. And that author I was talking about, he uh, delineates between uh, chasing your passion or following your passion and cultivating your passion, mm -hmm. right? So it's essentially kind of like you talked about extrinsic versus intrinsic, right? right? So chasing your passion, following your passion is external. So it's a goal, it's a, it's a, it's a physical, it's a tangible thing, sure. and you have to go get it. Right. right. Cultivating your passion is internal. You can grow it and wherever you are, whatever mm -hmm. you're doing, you can focus on learning and growing, and uh, he calls it the, the craftsman mindset. So sure. constantly honing your craft and, and, and learning new skills that are all gonna attribute and are gonna build towards making you the best person you could possibly be. Absolutely. Absolutely, and you know, um, there's almost a harmonious balance or value in in the fact that it's it's not just doing. You know, people could look at me um, as a musician and be like, "Oh, easy, he's a rapper." Yeah, he's a rapper. Right. Um, but how I see it, you know, rap is almost something like you can you go home, you go and you, you do the show, you come back <laughs> home, you take off this rapper hat and you hang it up. Sure. But I think an artist, you know, I feel like I'm an artist because it's every day I wake up and uh, whether I'm writing yeah. or freestyling or having conversations that, that I feel that inspire me right. to want to learn more right. and, and understand more about myself or about what's going on around me. I think that's the main difference. That's something I can't take off when I go home. Right. So either at home or out in public or wherever I'm at, I always want to learn more. Right and understand more <laughs> yeah and uh, yeah I think that's I think that's true for for anybody that's passionate about about whatever they're doing you know is even if you like you said if, you know people look at you and they say you're you're a rapper like maybe you're passionate about rap and that's you know long term maybe that's what you end up doing mm -hmm. you know for a living but everything that you do whether you're like you said whether you're reading you're writing you're having conversations mm -hmm. or if you're actually practicing you know your art itself uh, or if you're listening to different styles of music, or if you're, you know, if you're here training, whatever you're doing, everything that you do compiles into this passion because every single skill set that you acquire mm -hmm. is just gonna be one more tool that you can apply to what you're passionate every about. Yeah, yeah. In every facet, yeah, every facet, every aspect. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's one of the coolest things because it's not, you know, all of this, you know, this excitement for life in general. Um, I do put toward music. That is certainly one of my passions, but there are other things um, <laughs> that I'm able to now utilize that excitement and put it toward. Yeah. Um, you know, different projects um, and, and commitments and things like that. And, um, you know, even just, um, you know, viewing the world a little bit different. Right. Um, you know, it all, it all kind of comes from that same core. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, something interesting, too, was that, uh, so we... Um, the, the way I, I delineate between passion and purpose is, is passion is for us, purpose is for the world, right? It's for yeah, other yeah. people. Uh, the author that I've, I've been referencing, he actually combined the two. And he said, without purpose, you can't have passion. He said, part of being truly passionate about something and, and finding what you're compelled and you're driven to do mm -hmm. and what you what you let consume you and what you're you know what you want to learn and build constantly you have to be able to utilize that to leave an impact on the world so now oh no i'm sorry go ahead yeah so i think that cultivating your passion mm -hmm. i think has to be personal so learning right uh exploring being eager to take on the challenge of of learning new things and finding difficult things and, going out of your comfort zone and being vulnerable and all these things right. that we talk about, I think go into building your passion. But I think ultimately that if you feel like there's no way that you can have a positive impact on the world, mm -hmm. I don't think you'll ever truly be passionate about that. 
Yeah, and you know, and that's it's it's very interesting because it almost seems like the, the you know the levels to it um, sure. because you do it is going to have to be very self involved right. um, at the start you know to be able to um, do something enough and to want to do something enough to the point where you reach that uh, mastery <laughs> um, it's going to you're going to have to be very self motivated yeah. um, you can want to do as much good in the world as you want you know but um, you know, I think to be able to cultivate that passion first and then apply that tool set, apply that yes. unique yes. energy or tool set that, that you have um, is, is now, is what's going to leave that impact. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Um, but no, that is, who, do you remember the author to that? The author's name is uh, Cal Newport. Um, if I think of it afterwards, I'll, I'll try to find the link to the, the podcast I listened to where he's interviewed. Uh, it's, it's really in depth and he focuses a lot on cultivating your passion through uh, a career perspective, right? Sure. Um, but what's, uh, what's interesting is whether it's a career or whether it's just overall kind of worldly purpose is the idea that <clears throat> you can want to be successful in your career or you can want to have an impact on the world, mm -hmm. but until you've put in the work to cultivate a passion and, and to let your passion build itself, mm -hmm. right? Whether you know what it's going to be or if you have to find it. Right. Uh, until you know what that vehicle is going to be to, to make you successful in your career or just in the world, it's very difficult. It feels very listless. It feels very, uh, you're just kind of meandering through the darkness. Yeah. You know? No, very true. And, you know, and I, and I think that's kind of how Hold Down Upstate came about. It's nothing that I could have started uh, before I started working toward what I was passionate about. Right. It was nothing that even crossed my mind. Right. Um, but having gone through those steps, um, you know, having to, uh, working toward that mastery, um, you know, I would find myself in different situations, um, found myself with different opportunities, new opportunities. Um, but more importantly, mm -hmm. I would also find other people. I'd recognize other people that yep. were working in that same manner, that were driven in that same manner, um, and had great ideas and very passionate. And we were all doing these things separately and individually. And I saw the opportunity to come and try and do it right. together and work right. together. Right. So, you know, I, I think that's a good example of utilizing a passion for a purpose. Right. Um, and, and having that and, and being able to connect in that way. Right. Um, because like, Everything else we talk about, man, it, it does come down to connection. Yep. You know, I, I certainly could stay at home and rap all day long if I wanted to, and I probably have yeah. many times. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, to be able to utilize that uh, in, in a way that, um, that just connects, um, mm -hmm. it, it, it changes everything. It changes perspective. Yeah. And, and it is, it can be aimless, getting lost in your passion. Yeah. It can be, it can feel very aimless. <laughs> um, and without direction, but uh, once you apply that purpose, it, you know, things kind of, the dots start to connect yeah. when you look back and look forward. It's interesting too, because we, uh, we talked about this a lot in, uh, in comfort zones, how you get outside of your comfort zone, then your comfort zone grows to encompass that, and then you have to move forward again. So yeah. it's, it's very cyclical. So as we're talking about passion and purpose, it almost starts becoming this back and forth because mm -hmm. uh, I think we're all inherently born with a feeling and a desire to have purpose, to make sure. a difference, to matter, you sure. know? And and we don't know how we're gonna do that until we go through the trial and error of finding something that we're passionate about. Mm -hmm. And then we think, okay, well maybe I can use this passion to to grow my purpose, to, to make an impact, you know? And then you don't know exactly how that's gonna manifest itself, you mm -hmm. know? So you say, okay, I'm, I'm passionate about, about this, you know? So for me, it was, uh, I thought I was passionate about personal training. I thought I was passionate about lifting weights and making people's lives better through that facet. And that, so my purpose I knew was to make people's lives better. Mm -hmm. So eventually I found what I thought I was passionate about. So I started exploring strength training and uh, meal planning and all the things that go into being a personal trainer. And eventually through that cultivation of passion, it pushed me towards martial arts. Mm -hmm. And I started discovering martial arts and I found a new way to embrace my purpose of making you know of trying to better people's lives and then from there I started thinking well, maybe I'm passionate about jiu-jitsu mm -hmm. I started studying jiu-jitsu more and then 
I thought, okay, now, now my purpose is to enrich people's lives through jujitsu. And then I started studying kickboxing, Muay Thai, you know, and, and then uh, I thought, okay, well now, now I'm passionate about this and, and now my purpose is to improve people's lives through, through Muay Thai specifically. And then I decided, okay, well, maybe it's just martial arts in general. Maybe right. it's training in general, you know, and there's, all of a sudden now I have these, this toolbox full of things I can do of different ways that I can in, engage with people, mm -hmm. have discussions with people. Mm -hmm. And now I'm finding that, that whether it's on the mats or off the mats, I, cultivating and growing these, these interpersonal relationships and stuff. And there's, there's no shortage of ways that, that I've found that I can engage with people. They can impact me or if I'm, if I'm lucky, I can impact them. You know, and which leads me to, uh, um, you know, JP, I talked about at the beginning of the, of the episode, he reached out to me and asked if I wanted to do a speaking engagement, you know, and I just wanted to come in and talk to people. So now, now I get to go and talk to a room full. I mean, there was probably 30 ish people in there. Most of them, I, I, I think I knew two or three people in the room right. and I get to talk to a group of people that are all doing the same thing and they're all at various various places in their journey of either finding person or uh, purpose or passion or person as i'm gonna i'm just gonna right. meld them together and call it that from now on but <clears throat> you know so it's just for me it's just been this constant exploration and you and i exploring uh different philosophical ideas and tenets and and i mean you know whatever th whatever the hell we've been talking about for 30 episodes sure and so it's it's constant growth and and, and exploration and uh, I don't. I don't even know exactly what I'm passionate about now, but I'm. You know, you know but just excited. becoming. You know, but just becoming a person. Person of passion. Yeah. Of purpose. Yeah. So you know, wherever you put a person of passion or of purpose, they're gonna make an impact. I, I think right. no matter the situation, because <laughs> uh, it's true. I mean, there's no destination in this necessarily. Yeah. There's no yeah. destination in passion, um, and it is. You hear it all the time, man. But it is all a journey. Yeah. It all. Yeah takes different shapes and different forms given the people you meet or the situations or the scenario, but um, you, you, you adapt, you, you know, you learn to adapt, you know, everything that you have gone through before um, and how you have changed into those molds, you know, the next opportunity arises and you do the same thing. You yeah. utilize all those skills and all that passion and feeling of purpose yeah. and you apply it. And um, just that way of living is a, uh, you know, it's just to level up yeah. in general. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so this morning, um, when I got here, before I, I did my little training session this morning, I uh, was writing some notes down, and I just happened to scribble down, it's not about where you are. Mm -hmm. And when I was looking at that, while we were talking before we started the episode, and uh, just now, I was like, man, I couldn't exactly put myself back in the same frame of mind. For some reason, that hit me this morning, mm -hmm. and I said, write it down. And as you're talking right now, that's exactly that's exactly what it comes back to. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily matter where you are. If you put in the time, mm -hmm. and you put in, uh, like you said earlier, trial and error. Yeah. You know, you put in the reps and you have a real drive, that intrinsic, that internal drive to ignore the fact that my battery's still. Uh, <laughs> but it, you'll, you'll find yourself with a, a skill set and a tool set that no matter where you are, you can either find a new way to cultivate your passion, mm -hmm. you can find a way to impact somebody's life, or you can be receptive to somebody else impacting your life. Yes. You can find a new teacher, you can find a mentor, you can find a peer, you can find someone who's gonna challenge you to, to, to help you grow. Mm -hmm. But it is from that, and it, it seems a little selfish sometimes, but you, you have to put the work in on yourself yep. to be the best version of yourself you can be. So when the opportunity is there, you don't have to spend time getting ready. Mm -hmm. You can embrace it for what it is and, and grow. Absolutely. You know, you know, and it's uh, and it's not just about you know, say if I want to be the best artist that I can be or rapper or musician, it's not just about rhyming and writing yeah. and rhyming. Yeah. You know what I mean? At, at first, I think that's how I started off, with just page after page after page. Yeah. Um, but I, I kept hitting these, I kept hitting these walls. Um, you know, until I realized that it's, it, it's about that balance. It's about the inspiration that in any aspect of life, I want to put in that same page after page mentality type of work right, toward it. Right. Uh, so whether it's, uh, you, you know, physical health, 
uh, keeping myself healthy so I can do this for longer, <laughs> um, you know, dietary as well. Um, what I put in my, you know, what I put into my head, what I'm learning, uh, the people I keep around me, you know, all of these things help me to be a better artist in one form or another. And essentially just like a better person, like a yeah, better human yeah. being, you know, because the, the higher I can raise my levels, uh, the better the, 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 the output of, of work, right. of creation is going to be just right. naturally. And I think that's even having recognized that um, is an inspiration in itself because it's, it's become self-perpetuating. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely, man. It's, uh, it's interesting because listening to you talk about that, um, so you said if you want to be the best you know, rapper you can be, it's not just about sitting down and putting pen to paper hour after hour after hour, right? And that translates directly to, uh, you know, to in the in the weight room or like when I'm when I'm working on my overall strength. If I if my goal is to is to be able to do, you know, five pull ups. If that's my goal, I can get to that goal by just practicing pull ups every right. day, right? Or I can instead of doing pull ups, which I'm not able to do yet, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Hypothetically, I could I could totally do pull-ups. No, you got a couple. Yeah, I totally do pull-ups. So, uh, but um, you know, if I if I spend time doing cable row, you know, like lat pull downs, if I do push-ups, if I do shoulder strengthening exercises, if I understand all the different muscles that go into actually being able to do a pull-up, right. and I spend time working each one of those muscles individually, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Eventually, overall, that's gonna one, it's gonna get me to my goal more quickly. Sure. Two, I'm gonna be more well-rounded. You know. And then if I say, okay, well, my goal is to be able to do a pull-up, but I also want to be able to walk, so I should probably spend some time strengthening my legs. You, right, know, you can't right. fixate on just this one thing, and mm -hmm. you know, you're not just going to go in the weight room every day and only do pull-ups. Sure. You know, because then, yeah, eventually you can do pull-ups, but then maybe you can't do push-ups, maybe you can't do squat. You know, it's going to affect you overall in a very negative way. Sure. You know, um, and just I mean, runners are the same way. You know, people that run long distance, they don't just run every single day. They do strength training. They have overall. Sure. You know, body plans. They have overall goals, and like you said, diet plays into everything. And yes, yeah. you know, because extending yourself, um, you know, further in one direction is going to it means you kind of shorten yourself up in other sure, sure. You know, just and that's all. Those are all great examples. Right. Um, you know, as far as different muscles to one body. Sure. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, in the sense of running, you know, long distance runners, if that's all they do, I mean, they're, they're, you're gonna waste away. Yeah. You know, you have to counteract those things in order to maintain that harmonious balance that yeah. we were talking about before. Well, I mean, like, for you, you were, you know, track and field athlete. You, you didn't just go to the track every single day, right? You just jump over hurdles? No. Or, I, uh, or did you? <laughs> no. I actually did zero running when I was in track. Yeah. Zero. I only, I was only jumping, so oh, I don't gotcha. know if that was a good example. Sure. <laughs> but, I mean, you you're still, like, for jumping and stuff, you still had to do a lot of strength training. And, yeah, for yeah. sure. You know, strength training, um, jump rope, um, right. you know, calisthenics, stuff sure. like that, sure. stretching. Yeah. yeah, no, you're right, 100%. Yeah. But it's right. not, yeah, it's not just showing up every day and doing a pole ball or whatever the fuck you, I don't even know what you, <laughs> it's I, I came in hot, like, like I, I knew your history, and so I'm like, I don't even run, okay. Uh, no, it, I mean, because it's funny uh, that you bring that up, because honestly, the people that knew me then, I did everything I could to get out of running, sure. any sort of race or anything. Yeah. Um, I do the same thing now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's, I mean, you know, overall being, you know, multifaceted and even you don't have to be super knowledgeable in every single field, you right. know? but I think it's overall, I think even cultivating your passion in one thing, giving yourself the tools necessary to be good at that, I think really opens you up to learning more things yes. in every area. You know, and I think it's not the amount that you, it's not as important the amount that you know or amount that you learn, but it's the willingness to learn, a will willingness yeah, to yeah, be yeah, open yeah. to learn in a given uh, situation or scenario right. um, that I think is um, placed at a higher value because that's continual. Right. What we learn and know is going to fluctuate um, as, you know, as we move forward, um, but to always want and have that need, uh, I, I think, is that, uh, you know, that uh, aspect that we pick up yeah. that carries us yeah. forward. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a, it's a growth mindset, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. And I think once you, once you get to that point where you feel that passion, I think you can identify that um, by saying this is something 
that I'm always going to want to learn about. Yeah. This is something that I'm going to want to learn something new about for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. Like, I hope I never know everything there is to know about this subject. Mm. And that, I think, is the first exposure to passion. Yeah, you know? uh, yeah, 100% <laughs> right. 100% right. Um, back when I was first writing and trying to change uh, just some of my patterns around, uh, a lot of what I read kind of direct me back to the ability of the mind, the brain, right. yeah, yeah. And, and you know, and how malleable it was, and how you really could change, um, you know, your synapses and yeah. um, build new neurons and stuff like that. And I thought it was so fascinating. And no matter where I'm at, even even <laughs> today, uh, I feel like a lot of the stuff I read kind of brings me back to the potential of the mind and how we use it and how yeah. you know. W- the, the, the true power of it yeah. that I don't think that I think a lot of people kind of just in their everyday life just overlook or don't right. appreciate. Right. Um, so honestly, when I think about it, I, I wonder how much of my passion is really based on art, or if it's based on the potential of the human mind. Yeah. Like I don't know, yeah. I don't know, but yeah. I love learning about that. Yeah, constantly. Yeah, constantly. Honestly, man, I mean, is there is there anything you've ever learned about that you weren't like, huh? That's kind of neat. Yeah. Like baseline reaction. Oh, right. that's yeah, neat. Sure. No, Whether okay. you'll ever, you're like, it's I learned about cool. mon- or monsters. Learn about monsters, but <laughs> animals, right? Creatures that live yeah. way down in the depths of the bottom of the sea. And I'm like, huh, yeah. that's neat. neat. Probably never going to see that for real. I don't need any of that knowledge for anything, but right. it's, you know, something more that I've been exposed to. Sure. You know? And that ability to just constantly be able to, to, to shape and hone your mind and understand that every single thing you learn, whether it, it makes you a better conversationalist because because having a cursory knowledge of most things you can talk to almost anybody sure you know it, somebody comes up to me and says i study deep sea animals i'll say wow that's cool i know about this one thing with a lay on it so they're gonna say wow you're you're incredibly ignorant but that's the same thing i thought of yeah. when you said dta the one yeah. with the light yeah, yeah. right <laughs> but I, you know it gives you a, a, a jumping off point and then sure. you can have a conversation with somebody who knows way more than you do sure. you can learn a tremendous amount and constantly sharpening and honing your, your mind sure. and using whatever skills that you learn from whatever conversations or interactions or circumstances you find yourself to grow your passion mm-hmm. and to ultimately live a, a purposeful and a, and a fulfilling life, you know? Fulfilling a full life, a full yeah. day, man. Yeah. There's nothing like having a full day. Yeah. Um, and, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and it is, it's, that passion is almost at right at the core of you. Yeah. You know, the core yeah. of the individual. And everything, once you have, you know, <laughs> cultivated that passion, that core, and everything you do kind of stems from that. So in whatever direction you go, you, you might go 50 different directions in a day. Yeah. But, you know, if all those directions stem from that core of passion, of yeah. wanting to learn, of, um, of, of fulfilling, or you know, extending purpose yeah. or providing purpose. Um, that to me is a full day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And to, 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 to live consecutive full days, um, day after day. I mean, that's, that's the true goal. That's the goal. That's yeah. the true goal. For sure. For sure. Man. And what's, uh, so kind of, kind of bring it a little bit full, more full circle. The, um, finding yourself in a community of passionate and, and knowing that every single person in that group or that crowd or that city or that state or wherever you are has that same desire for purpose, right? Right. That is probably one of the most significant realizations and most inspiring feelings I've ever felt. Mm-hmm. Knowing that for a 100% fact that every single person I talk to, had, whether they've recognized it or not, they have a, a desire to cultivate passion and they have a need to be purposeful. Mm. And being able to, uh, you know, finding myself in a position where I feel like I can confidently say that to a person and in some way, shape or form, open a doorway for a, a meaningful discussion. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't have to know what their passion is. I don't have to know what their purpose is. I don't have to know what they've gone through in life, but I know that at least at the bare minimum, at the deepest part of who that person is, there's a conversation there to be had. Sure. You know, maybe it's something they've ever explored, but it's but it's there. And when you talk to people in those terms, man, you can see it. 
in, it, their, in their mind. You, you can, and, you know? and you feel it. Yeah. And, and, and it transcends, you know, religious belief. It yeah. transcends political preference. Yeah. It, it, what, whatever you want to name that separates us, it transcends that. Yeah. And it, it makes, and conversation comes natural. Yeah. You know what I mean? People are there to listen, to learn, to yeah. apply. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's a true sense of community. Yeah. That's a true sense of yeah. community. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's incredible, man. I, I think the, uh, the ultimate purpose is to do good, you know, for, for each other, for our surroundings, right. for whatever. You know, it's a, my favorite quote, and I say it every single chance I get from Marcus Aurelius, is the, the purpose of man is to do good to all men. Sure. You know, and I think everybody has that defined inside of them. Mm -hmm. You know, like you said, whether religious beliefs, political beliefs, whatever, you have that that kind of purpose, that feeling or that need to, to be a benefit to society as right. opposed to a detriment, you know? And Absolutely. Knowing how we're gonna get there, exactly how we're gonna make that happen, I think that's what leads us to, to finding our passion. Right, You know, that's the individual responsibility, yeah. I think. Yeah. You know, because you, you gotta do good first. Right. You, and then just yeah. do good and do good together. Right. Great, absolutely, man. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I think that's a dope spot to wrap it up. That's it. Perfect. That's Done. It. <laughs> awesome, man. Uh, Quince, thank you as always, man. Week after week. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Absolutely. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for joining us. And, uh, yeah, uh, throw us a comment. You know, mm -hmm. let, let us know what you think. Uh, engage in the conversation with us. We'd love to hear what, what you guys are passionate about or what you want to talk about. And uh, nothing else. We'll see you next week. Peace, guys. Adios.